Following next president of the Irish Freedom Party from Ireland, Mr. Herman Kelly. Chief Fajr Prieten, Lutatori Pentru Libertate. Mulsumim. In Ireland, they say a polyglot is someone who can order two beers in 16 languages. I am a Gael, a Celt, and we know for, I used to teach uh, classical studies in uh, secondary school, and I learned that uh, the two people who really scared the Romans were the, the Celts and the Romanians. The Romanians were regarded as big men with curved swords who made a lot of noise, and the Celts they were those in northern Scotland. They scared the Romans and they keep them out. They built Hadrian's Wall. They just keep them away from me, please. But only anyway, we fought for 800 years against Britain to get rid of foreign rule that we could have the power to make our own laws and decide our own destiny. In, in 1937, we gave ourselves a constitution. And Articles 1 to 6 of our constitution lay out who is the Irish people, our territory, our type of government, our national sovereignty. However, in 1973, we voted to join what became the European Union. And in Article 29.6, it basically said that nothing within this constitution can constrain or stop any law made by obligations of EU membership. So it's very clear after fighting 800 years for our national sovereignty, within a short period of time, we then give it away because in our constitution, our constitution is no longer so sovereign. Would you believe in matters of EU competence, EU law is superior to Irish law, the Irish Supreme Court and the Irish constitution? This is an absolute scandal which should be corrected. Luckily for you, for the people of Poland, Germany and Romania, still that you are blessed that your constitutions are still supreme over EU law. So make sure you keep that very much. As a colony of Britain, would you believe we had 16% of the votes in the Westminster Parliament? But now in Brussels, in this new political union that we have, we are a mere 1%. What power do you think a people of 1% have in the European Union? Virtually none. So we've been taken for a real hard ride over the last number of decades. When we joined the EU, we were told, give up your fishing, the farmers will benefit. Well, they, they take out 85% of the fish out of Irish waters, go to EU boats. And now, just now, they're the game is up and they are going to destroy the farming industry. They're talking about a uh, slaughter of 200,000 cattle in Ireland. So and Ireland's a net contributor. A bit, we were told, yeah, Ireland was a poor country. During the EU, we were told, they give you a lot of money. Yeah, they do for a while. But then you wake up one day and you'll find you're a massive net contributor and you've lost all sovereignty over your country. So believe me, considered very, very deeply. That event you had last night was hugely, hugely impressive. Talking to other people here, I know that there are many government parties uh, of countries that are around Europe who could not organize an event like that. One of the reasons, one is obviously the size. This is a big party in a big country. But also you have the people who have also the enthusiasm fire in their belly for freedom. And that is very important. So make sure you keep that, please. Question. <laughs> Question that you have will be asked next year is very, very simple, really. Do you want to be, a, do you want representatives in Brussels who are national watchdogs or EU lapdogs? Do they want people who believe in national democracy or Brussels bureaucracy? It's very, very simple. What Europe needs at the minute, because you see it's fallen into real trouble, decadence, it's all about LGBT, IQ minus, about 
chicks with dicks and cocks and frocks, and it's, it's crazy what is going on in Europe at the minute. But what Europe really needs at the moment is nations and nation states which promote faith, family, fecundity, having children to give their country a future. Nationalist parties should be pro-natalist and pro-family because it's with children and education that we form a culture, we form nations and we form a civilization. And that's what we need again in Europe. We can see that in two things, in economics and in warfare. Not only to survive, but to thrive and to win, you need four things. One is children, education, technology, and will. And will, what does will come from? What does this will to survive and thrive and continue, what does it come from? It comes from our history, our Christian faith, our culture, a sense of we have got something to give to the world. An Irish patriot, Podrick Pierce, once said that not for the gale, the loom of the, or the sword, but to be the saviour of social idealism and a Europe falling into darkness. Now, it's very clear that Western Europe certainly is falling into darkness. There's a part in the liturgy about lux ex oriente. Light comes from the east. That's why the priest and the people face east. So it looks to me and it's been remarked by a few people here today that it looks to be, it looks to be that light in Europe is currently coming from the East. So I commend you, I thank you for your invitation to the people from Or for your invitation today, and I commend you in your fight for national sovereignty and for freedom for Romania, and that you be almost the kingmakers across Europe in leading by example in your fight for freedom. Goro Margitza, Slana Spana. Thank you. It's impossible to convey the size of this building. There's another huge story on top of this which you can't see. It's absolutely colossal.